I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is uh, Frank, Frank Turner. Turner. Love, Ire, and Okay, so song. this was for River, and... Oh, River's my homie. Yeah, look, he, well... As if you stopped the video is, on that. You are such uh, a... I really didn't. You are such a one-track minded That's, person. But you're the one that noticed that. Anyway. This is this is when he he did it. He says down here, despite the title of the video, it's just the album's title track taken off of Epitaph Records stream. stream. It gives me a lot of hope, especially the line that's "Let's be cross enough to care." Regardless of the results, I feel like we need to remember that this isn't the end, just another beginning. It's just funny because of when he posted this, and like right now we're about to have that thing where it's like is you know Trump is going into his whole thing like is he gonna get sworn in is it that you know what I mean like so it's just funny the timing of when it kind of popped up. Is this song about love or something like that? I don't think it is. <laughs> oh okay I see what you're saying. He, he's he according was, to what he he's saying. He's warning us. He yeah. was, he's warning I us. I think it's another political one. <laughs> okay anyway <clears throat> if you are like, okay, who is this river guy and why is he getting a song reaction? The way that you get your song reacted to, there's a couple different ways of doing it. One of them is you jump on the 125 tier on Patreon or you can go through PayPal. It's a little bit quicker, but it doesn't have the extra perks. Like if you jump on Patreon and you do it, there's other things that are available to you. Like we have a song that we did. 30 seconds of it is available. Um, well, the beginnings of the 30 seconds is available to you and some other different things are available on there that you uh that you can uh get your get your fingers on but the the other way that you can get your song reacted to is to join an alliance that's also through patreon but that one is not 125 that one starts at a dollar so you can join up with a group of other people and you guys work together to get songs onto our reaction list um so there's good things all around we should have a fun little commercial coming soon <laughs> for what we're doing. The kids are helping me with it. They're having fun with it. <laughs> anyway, so we are going to do Frank Turner Love. What is this? Ire? Ire? Ire. Ire and Song from the big oh, homie no, Frank Turner. I brought my headphones Turner. downstairs because oh, we were... we're setting up our guitar yeah. stuff because we're about to make the most amazing music. Okay. That's just for the kids because I don't want to put it down. How? We took or all Or do you want to just play it out loud? Did we take all no, our No, we didn't shit? take your phone. Well, a teacher of mine once told me that life was just a list of disappointments and defeats And you could only do your best And I said, well, that's a fucking cop-out You're just washed up and you're tired And when I get to your age, well I won't be such a coward But these days I sit at home Known to shout at my TV And punk rock didn't live up to what I'd hoped that it could be And all the things that I believed with all my heart when I was young just coasters for beers oh and gosh. clean surfaces for drugs And I packed all my pamphlets with my Bibles at the back of the shelf Well it was bad enough the feeling and the first time it hit when you realized your parents had let the world all go to shit And that the values and ideals for which many had fought and died had been killed off in the committees And left to die by the wayside But it was worse when we turned to the kids on the left And got let down again by some poor excuse for protest Yeah, by idiot fucking hippies in 50 different factions Who were locked inside some kind of 60s battle reenactment and I hung up my banner in disgust And I head for the door Oh, but once we were young And we were crass enough to care But I guess you live and learn We won't make that mistake again, no Oh, but surely just for one day, yeah, we could win and if only for a little while we could insist on the impossible well we've been a good few hours drinking 
So I'm gonna say what everyone's thinking If we're stuck on this ship and it's sinking Then we might as well have a parade Cause if it's still gonna hurt in the morning And our better plans yet to get forming Then where's the harm spending an evening In manning the old barricades So come on old friends to the streets Let's be 1905 but not 1917 Let's be heroes, let's be martyrs, let's be radical thinkers Who never have to test drive the least of their dreams Let's divide up the world into the damned and the saved And then ride to the valley like the old light brigade And straighten our backs and we won't be afraid And they'll celebrate our deaths with a national parade So come on, let's be young, let's be crowned Enough to care Let's refuse to live and learn Let's make all our mistakes again Yes And then darling Just for one day Yeah we can fight And we can win And if only for a little while We could insist on the impossible Leave the morning to the morning, yeah, pain can be killed With aspirin tablets and vitamin pills But memories of hope and of glorious defeat Are a little uh. bit harder to beat Well, I'm sad that song is over. <coughs> it's a beautiful... I like that. ...beautiful song. Reminds me of Ian. Me too! That's reminds, so weird! Reminds me of... <laughs> well, Ian... Ian is, uh... The thing about Ian is he's always got that uh, childlikeness. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a sweetness about Ian. Still a lot, yeah, a lot of innocence about him. That, yeah. That, that's uh, yeah. That's uh, shit, man. I haven't talked to him in a while. Ian, hit me, bro. <laughs> the last time I talked to him was when he was helping me ship that jacket. It went through all that, Ian, and I'm too fat for it. <laughs> so we're hitting up the gym, so. <laughs> <laughs> so by spring, I should be able to fit in that winter jacket. <laughs> yeah, man, have a uh, inch. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit him up right now. You, What's you keep good? it. Maybe we gotta have... move and get him over for a visit. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'll cook you up some goodies. No, that shit is real, bro. Like he's definitely gotta come over. Oh, right I think right. that will happen for sure. One hundred percent. We'll pay for your ticket, bro. Two you probably wanna do it in the summertime, though. Yeah. Just more. To do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, this song. I'm, just, I'm trying to find the homie right now, okay. The word crash, is it like. Crass. Is it, I mean, crass like, is it's it. It's like uncouth. Young and. It's like, ugh, crass. Remember, like, how. Oh. <laughs> you know, like. Is. She was crass. She's crass, you know. Yeah, lacking and sensitivity, refinement, like, or intelligence. <laughs> well, it's it's the whole lacking refinement thing, and this yeah. guy's British. He sounds like so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but like, like your favorite kind of demographic of human being is like teenage boy. Yep. And it's like they're crass and they're yeah. you know oh me oh uh, yeah you, you know you love you love yeah, that it's, stuff. It's, <laughs> It's very fun to me. So, so it's a, yeah, and, and it's, you know. It, it, or even like watching the boys when they were out there, like, so that we have this big thing. I don't know what is wrong with this building complex, but they give you a whole bunch of salt and dirt, but they leave the cap off it. I don't even think there's a cap out there, so the whole thing is just like this solid block. For the uninitiated, they, 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 they drop off salt and dirt in the winter because the ice... Oh, becomes yeah. a uh, serious health risk. Like people, it's slip, so slide, thick you, it's you thick. fall all over the place, and it doesn't matter how agile you are. Like it's ice. You're going. You're going down if you hit that you're right. Gonna, you're gonna concussions, all that, and you get liability. Yeah. So they'll put ice and all that, and they'll put the the salt and the, the salt and the sand mixture the sand out there. That. But if the, the cap is left off and it rains in it, well, it's melting the salt, and now it's a solid block. So I see. He sends our kids out. Here's a little clip of 
<laughs> Yo, on out there. 1905, but not 1917. Let's be heroes. Although, he, this it was much more serious when he first started. He was going all in, and Dorian was out there like, yeah! It was like such a boy moment. But anyway, so yeah, I do, I do like that. This song is kind of about like... Being a being, you, you know, that self-righteous, judgmental teenager that thinks they have everything figured out and judges the, the older. I know. Generation. I thought of myself a lot when I heard the song. Actually, it judges the older generation, and then you become the older generation, yeah. and then you become disenfranchised and disillusioned. Yeah. Like the teacher was telling him, you know, like uh, disappointment is defeat. Only do your best. Yeah. And they go, "Oh, you're full of shit." You. Suck, Verse blah, one blah, to blah, me blah. was like, "Okay, yeah, I remember being like that." Yeah, I. I I don't think, uh, I don't oh, think I, I believe with all my heart when I was young. I don't think, uh, you know, it's interesting. Like I, I lost my innocence so young that I don't think I really had this sort of giant traumatic thing when I was a teenager. Like the stuff that I believed as a teenager and the principles that I have, like haven't changed. Yeah. Like I, I feel like I'm the exact same kid. I was in high school as far as what I believe, what I think. Yeah. And there's nothing that I've, that I've seen. Not me. I've seen, in my opinion, you know, some of the worst of what humanity can offer. But I don't... And you know what I think it is? Because I was trying to figure this out. I'm like, why didn't I go through that? Some of it is horrible because I was probably traumatized when I was a very, very young age. Uh, but to, uh, honestly, I think it's uh, post-millennialism. Because it it, uh, it creates a sort of, uh, you know, Pollyannish view of the future. So it's like, but but it's the, it's a theological sort of view of the future. So it's not like, oh, you're just, you just want the future to be good. Yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what the, the Bible says is going to happen. So, and I don't believe it's going to happen like in the afterlife. Yeah. I believe it's going to yeah. happen here. And so because of that, I hold on to the pro-life movement and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. stop I'm never gonna stop I'm never gonna quit because there's so many people that have like Christians that are like well you know because their view of the future is everything is gonna get more and more shitty mm -hmm. so they're like well you just do your best but you know abortion we're never gonna overcome that you know it's like it's like thank god you weren't around doing I slavery I know. get out yeah. of dodge yeah um, no, no, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about Christians now like so and I've got oh, letters yeah. I've got letters of people writing letters to, uh, who is that Armenian dude? Very famous Armenian dude. It was, uh, Whitfield and, uh, and the, the three brothers and then the mom or whatever. Anyway, um, uh, pe people would, he, he was, he was like an abolitionist with slavery. Like he was, it was a, you know, that was his big thing. And, and there were actual letters that I've read from other Christian Pastors that are like, this is this is a very noble thing, but uh, slavery is never going to be overcome. Like oh this is gosh. this has been the 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 world has done this since forever, mm -hmm. and you even have people on our team supporting slavery. So there's no way it's very. It was basically they were patting him on the head and be like, just preach the gospel and don't worry about the slavery stuff. And he and then he'd come back. You're not even a Christian. <laughs> Well, you should, I mean, you know, Armenians—they don't think anybody's crazy, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's no so. way. Yeah. There's no way. According <laughs> to that mindset, that guy could even be close yeah. to the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I can't believe I forgot the guy's name. I feel terrible. John Wesley. It was oh. John Wesley? The Wesleyans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and so Whitfield kind of had this more like, let's be practical. The more adult. And 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 uh, Wesley was more whimsical mm -hmm. and, and and more like no, like this is a horrible evil. We mm -hmm. need to speak about it against it every chance we have. Uh, and John Brown was kind of like the same way. And they were like, eh. there was a, a quote from John Brown that was mind blowing to me because they were like, one of his friends was like, why do you speak with so much heat? And he says, uh, he says. My friend, I am, I am, um, I speak with such heat because I'm being confronted with glaciers, in people's hearts, yeah. you know, and, uh, yeah. and th there's always that battle, you know, obviously we're Christians, so like that's, that's the context we're in, you know, like there's always that battle between people who are idealistic 
about what they see, mm -hmm. and then the the more seasoned and learned people that say, no, 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 that, like, that's just the way it is, let's just make the best out of the bad situation, then you have other people that say, no, I'm not accepting that shit. Mm -hmm. And that so many people, like pastors, whatever, be like, yo, man, like, abortion's gonna be around forever. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about abortion's gonna be around forever? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. was it around in the 50s? Like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? But... So then I have that, like, man, you're just tired, you're washed it's out, you're scared, you're soft, you don't want to get into the conflicts, you don't want, you know, blah, 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 blah. You didn't want to deal with the legal ramifications that we had to deal with. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> Well, that's what I'm thinking, is, like, the person, the pastor that says it's always going to be around is probably the same pastor that's not doing anything to... To help oh, alleviate no. the stress of, you know, moms that are going in that are trying no. to, you know, he, he's not doing anything because it's the people that are over there trying to help those women yeah. that that are believing that this is going to end. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. And, you know, the, the vast majority of us were young, but you also had some OGs and it was, oddly enough, women. You know, was, they, they were a generation older than us, and they were grinding, and they were working, and they were doing they were doing the thing. Mm -hmm. um, Some of them had had abortions themselves. Oh, they all did. No, not that the, older the, the one only, with the cap on her head. The, the, the only one that didn't was the older one. Yeah. But the, the other ones had had multiple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The main one had had six. I know. Oh, my gosh. I know. She had had six. She used to cry. She used to... <laughs> I don't... I don't. Yeah. I feel like, you know, to be, to do something like that and at the time, like, believe that it's not like a baby, you know what I mean? Or to well, she didn't, she was in a situation where there were economic, I mean, she was a sex worker, say it that way. I don't know if you've ever, like, fully heard no, her story. No. Yeah, she was basically a sex worker in Japan and... And oh so gosh. she would get pregnant and they would just oh cart her gosh. into the thing and yeah. she would get whatever and then she'd be back out there. So Oh that is that is really sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That but is really like, terrible. I'm just using abortion as a as a as a as an example of like idealism versus practicality because there's a really ugly side to that too, is when people I believe like these really bitter people that are like, we need to have death penalty for women and calling the women whores and all this when they're going in. Like, the horrible people that they're... I'm like, I feel like those are people that have given up, but they're... But they, as they're leaving, they want to, you know, just spread as much pain as possible because they quit on the thing. And because think about it, you're calling this girl a whore. You're, like, there's there's no human being on the planet that's like, yep, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna turn that girl around. She's gonna say, you know what? Maybe I had other options. Mm -hmm. Sure, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so that yeah. just means you just and it's always the older guys that are doing it. Like, it's always the older, uh, and they're they're full of you know they're just bitter. And you could tell like there was one time when I had to confront a dude, and I was like, yo, if you can't fucking keep oh, your head yeah. straight, you're out. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the guy was like, was out of, yeah. The guy was like six four. He was a big, big dude, yeah. and he he you could just tell like he was he was getting bitter. He wasn't treating the girls with with any respect. There was no like, you know what I mean. But he, but again, he was he was uh, like a generation older than us, and he you know I had to pull him to the side like, look man, this is your last week here. Mm -hmm. If you can't you know whatever. And it was funny. Well, I think that it's funny because he listened to me, which is ridiculous because he had no reason to listen to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that guy was nothing to him, but he, he listened, so uh, well, shout I, out to the I think that he, you know, obviously he knew that you were right in the way that he was comporting himself, but I think that when you are, there's a certain kind of, I don't want to say mania, but there's something that happens like when you are aware of what's going on and you are fully aware of what's going on. It's like if I was standing outside of the, you know, the gulag and watching those people go in and watching the smoke coming up, like there's something that happens to you when you know, like, oh my gosh. And like seeing, seeing the girls going in and then like seeing them going in and some of them were like really like, y'all, you know, like that, that that's what they were going to do. But then seeing them come out and like when they came out, like seeing that they realized like, it didn't wasn't always like that. They but were there always was times alone. Where it was like, oh, they were always alone. It's always yeah. Alone. 
going but in, there's like five people all yep. support you, blah blah blah, and then she's got to carry out. that shit by yeah, herself. By herself. Comes out. Just like you got your sometimes check. they look like pale, and and like. I don't know, like really. There's like, so many sad, things. Like the, the way that you there's know, so like, many things about that that stuff that people have no idea about. And not even the escorts that would escort them in. They wouldn't even walk them out. No. Or no. even say a word to them. No. No. Uh, you know what I think it is? What can you say? Exactly. You were cheering for them to go in. Correct. You you walked her into this irreversible decision, and now what can you say to her? Twenty yeah. minutes ago, you were doing the rah rah shit. You know, and. Yeah, that that was always the worst. But that's what I'm saying. Like I know that he blew up like that, and it wasn't good, and I don't agree with it. But that something happens when you when you want to, you know, you you're trying to save lives. It's not like you're debating over which <sighs> yeah, yeah. You know, chocolate. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah but again, I, I just think that that's that's what happens with age. You know, over time, like you you're spun out if you're in the movement you you get spun out and it's like you have to have the self-awareness to be like i need to remove myself here mm-hmm. like, yeah but he and, hadn't and, been in it longer than us eddie uh yeah he, they'd been in it for a while but i, I just think i i, I think yeah, and you're right like he was a little bit different because he changed after i you know i pulled him aside and had that conversation you know but I, and, and I don't want the, the thing to be derailed about abortion. Like the the point is, is like having this sort of Pollyannish view of the world when you're younger, and then life hits you, and you're like, oh my god, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. That didn't happen with me, but it, it's not. It, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It didn't happen to me on the bad side because I was, you know, I, as far back as I can remember, my earliest memories, most people would probably construe as traumatic. Uh, <laughs> so you know, um, most people. Yeah, I, no, I I think it's safe. I to think say if that. someone didn't, that death, that says that something happened to them. Well, I mean, I mean, who walks around saying, "Oh, I was traumatized," again? but like, so so part of the reason is like I I never grew up with this like rosy vision of the world. It actually, went backwards for me. Like I started being like, "Oh, this is how it is. Adults fight. They try to kill each other. They've got guns. They." Whatever. Like I just, I thought that, that was that was just normal. I would watch TV. People would be there. I'm like, man, those people are gonna stay together. Even friends. I'm like, man, they're not gonna, mm-hmm. you know, like, cause that was my whole mentality. Um, and it wasn't until I got introduced to post millennialism, really, as to when I got a a, a uh, positive view of the world and the future. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when I learned about, you know, I really dug into the image of God stuff, and then when I learned about post-millennialism and I was like really seeing it in the Bible and I was seeing it in history you know like one of my friends shout out to uh, to the to the big homie he was like because COVID happened he was like oh what do you think about your good future now I'm like are you kidding me this would have wiped out like 50 million people right back in the day yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. we just got done talking to a lady that had, uh, has, has a vaccine say what you want about what's happening with the whole situation with Trump like you know we just got done watching a biopic about you know King Henry where if you wanted to take power you killed people people ended up killed I mean forget take power he wanted a divorce oh, yeah. the church wouldn't give him a divorce yeah. he shot shorty's head out shout out to him yeah and this stuff is obviously like things are so better. much better now we were like, talking about I'm like I would have I would have been dead there's no way I would have made it out of childbirth you wouldn't have made it out of childbirth but I, but like I said I would your first one I wouldn't have made it even that far because when I was nine, my appendix was about to burst, and they removed it. You've been KIA. So you wouldn't. And I would, have, I would have been dead because I'd have been in the ground in a Nat Turner revolt somewhere, like right. real shit. So, right. like the world, if you look at, if you look at the world from the the very myopic sort of surrounding, and you're comparing it to the ideal, mm-hmm. then yeah, everything sucks. But when you compare the world to where we were a hundred years ago, where we were, you know, we had two world wars, and we've been able to go about 50, 60 years without right. another world war. That's right. good. Right. America's a horrible fucking empire. I agree. But we're not crucifying people like the Romans did. Mm-hmm. Like so, like, <clears throat> like just because you call out an evil doesn't mean that the whole world is evil. And just because you look at the good in the world doesn't mean that there is an evil in the world and that there isn't work to be done. I think right. I think the healthcare crisis, that's something that I, I'm so grateful to the channel for because we were not exposed to people 
that, you know, had that view. I remember, like, I kind of, in the in the previous context we were in, I was kind of like, I would never come out and say, like, I'm pro-Medicare for all or something like that. Um, but I was pretty good about really? it. Really? I'm not sure if I ever, I, I don't think I ever came out and said that. I'll go back and listen to the previous Yeah, podcast. but I thought that that was where we first heard about that kid with the insulin. No, 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 no. That, that happened. Way, that happened that in the channel. Yeah, I was oh, about wow. to hear it. On the, yeah, so I was not like, okay. like cr crazy about it. Like I, like I say, it's a pro life issue. So there is yes. very little distinction between abortion and wow, it's so weird. And I people for sure I and people you. dying for lack of insulin. Yeah, like there, there's very little distinction. Oh no, I agree with you. Yeah, and, and so like, you know. So understanding that is a pro life issue, you know. So like things are like, oh, I'm learning, and it's crazy because I learned to be more of a pro life person not from Christians, but I learned it from BM fan and Zonia and and, and, and Ian. And somebody had posted some random story about this Alex Smith kid, the one that died of the insulin, mm -hmm. and uh, that changed my that changed mm -hmm. my so much mm -hmm. of. You, you, so like Albany Rose has been like her mindsets and her thought processes on things have been helpful for me. Shout out to Albany yeah. Rose is unbelievable, mm -hmm. unbelievable, greatest pro. And I, I like I want her to be a Christian someday, but I'm very glad that she's not because it's very effective. I yeah, I, I don't think she's gonna hold out. I'm gonna send her this video. I don't think she's gonna hold out much longer when I read her stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Albany Rose, but I feel that way about all my friends. Like I, yeah. I always feel like. Zonia's gonna kingdom? send me, yeah. Well, <laughs> Zonia's gonna me. send me a text and go, ah, yeah. Jesus guy. Why is it that all of your friends are close to the kingdom? <laughs> Everybody I like is going with me. Yeah, it? yeah. But but so uh, you know that whole thing where you 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 know and, and you know we kind of saw it in the even in the in the show with King Henry, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's like, you know, there was one specific line where his best friend was like, we've lost our youth. You yes. know, and it's really they yes. lost their innocence. And then there was another thing like, "What can you not replace?" And then he said, "Honor." He's like, "No, you can you can replace your honor. You go do something." And then he's like, "Well, what is it then?" He's like, "Time. Like you spend time, you can't get it back." And they were just old, and they had he had done his dirt, and then you know his best friend had done his dirt too, and and you know you're just left with the ugliness of. Mm -hmm. Functioning in a sinful world, and you're gonna get your your nails dirty, man. You're gonna do bad shit, and you lose you lose uh, you lose a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And, and if you don't have a framework, if you don't have a framework to understand what's happening to you, it, it's a very traumatic moment when you lose that type of innocence, you know. And for me, it's like I see it a lot with people, and it's like to be able to sit somebody down and explain this is what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. Um, it provides people a little bit of hope, you know, and, and the guy, and, and, and the other thing about life, you know, is, is that, you know, he's, he made some statement about like, oh, the, we'll, we have a nice something about the saved and the damned. Let's divide up the world into the damned and the saved, you know, like, yeah. and, and again, this is another, some of this has to do with like my, you know, research into Islam and, and being, becoming friends with Muslims and seeing Muslims in actions and seeing Muslims comport themselves in extremely honorable fashion even the bad guys no. and seeing the honor with which that they would you know whether it was dying with honor or whether it was you know sparing somebody's life who mm -hmm. you know, like it's like you know that story where the Muslim lady uh, it's called Kassas. It's, it's it's vengeance, just righteous vengeance. Where um, there was an altercation, this dude stabbed another dude in in Iran. I knew this is where you were going. And the kid died. Yep. And so he was guilty. And so in in their you know where they are, the the offended family is allowed to, is is the one that kicks the. The little thing, so when the guy hangs, and you know they they swing and die, but they have the opportunity to uh, give forgiveness because Muhammad said, um, "Yeah, I mean you can take vengeance, but forgiveness is better." Don't you like it when Allah forgives you for your sins? Mm -hmm. And so there was this whole the the and it was crazy because in Islamic family you have this stereotype that the man I'm the man and mm -hmm. running the roost. 
And in that particular family, the the mom was the one that was going to make the decision. And she was like going back and forth. And she's yeah. like, I don't know what to do. And the husband said, uh, trust Allah and he will make the way easy for you. And so the guy, the guy, the next, he said, trust Allah and you'll find your way. That's what it was. I was like, subhanAllah. Mm. <laughs> it's just so yeah. simple. Yeah. And so then he, and then, you know, so the kid is there and he's got the rope around his neck, the blindfold. And then the, and she was like, no, he's, he's done. He's done. So he's dead. And then she, um, she goes up to him and she's ready to kick out the little chair or whatever. And she smacks him and then takes off the blindfold and then tells the guys, let him go. Uh, she said, we're not going to have another grieving mother today. I'm going to be the only grieving mother today. Ugh. And subhanAllah, it was just such a beautiful... And so, like, these very neat... Ca oh, all Muslims are going to hell. It's like... Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gospel literalist, man. Jesus said he's the only way, mm -hmm. right? So, but, but then at the same time, I'm like, is Jesus not in that situation? Especially, Ugh. especially with the theology that we have, how in the world did she pull that off? You know what I mean? Well, honestly, I, I like, I know a lot of Christians yeah. that, that would have, you know, no, oh, and, and, and it was funny. Good. It was fun. yeah, yeah, click, click. <laughs> but like, it was so it, it wasn't hilarious. It was infuriating because I had put I had put posted that on another, you know, whatever, yeah. and, and and you know, my pagan friends and my non Christian friends were like, "Holy shit, that's challenging!" I don't know. <laughs> and the Christians were like. These are Muslims. They hate us. You're blind. You've got your head in the sand. Wow. Is, they were like, "This is uh, this uh. is this is the exception. This is not the rule." Blah blah. blah. I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like, where where do you get?" And I could just uh, tell the uh, guy knew uh, no uh, Islam. Uh. He didn't know the story about where that entire situation came from. Where where Muhammad said, "Forgiveness is better. Don't you love it when Allah forgives you?" Actually, Muhammad didn't say that. Allah said that to Muhammad. Because uh, this woman Hind had killed his favorite uncle Hamza, because pretty much nobody in Muhammad's family believed in him except for Hamza, yeah. and Hamza believed in him, and Hamza went to war for him, mm -hmm. and Hamza was a lion, and he was crazy, and so like they wanted him taken out. So Hamza got taken out. They desecrated his body. So which shame on our culture and Muhammad seats in Laban. So he goes in there and he loses. He's like, all right, if I see this mother, I'm, I'm killing niggas. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And Allah said, Nah, you can't do that, bro. Like, it's got to be one for one. You can't go in and, and just go in. And you definitely cannot desecrate the dead, even if they did it to your guy. So Allah said that to who? Muhammad. Isn't that kind of weird? You see, you can't do it. But the, these are, these are that creates a bunch of theological problems, it right? It does. It does, because on the one hand, you have, you know, he married that young girl, and he wanted everybody he out. He married so Aisha. He says, look, well, no, I don't know if it was Aisha. It was Aisha. It was, that's when he kicked oh, no, everybody no, no, out. No, 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 that he had basically kidnapped, but yeah. Allah had spoken to him, and you shouldn't annoy a prophet or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Tell, 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 tell the nice people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, oh, you who believe, uh, uh, do not do not stay too long in, in the prophet's house. He is too embarrassed to say this to you, but Allah is not too embarrassed. Do not annoy the prophet. So that one was one you know where, where like, clearly there's a very natural <laughs> understanding of how Muhammad got Allah that revelation. That and Muslims, don't, like be, don't be mad at me, Muslims, because Aisha was like, Ya Rasulullah, it seems that Allah hastens to fulfill your desires. Yeah, right. So yeah. I'm not the only one, Muslims. Um, but... But yeah, it was a beautiful. So, so anyway, so so the, I'm saying one at the one hand he's getting, you know what I mean, and then this one it's like it's he, he that's not what he wanted. That's not what he wanted at he all. He wanted to he wanted yeah. he wanted to put some blood on the ground. And what would you do if you saw your favorite family? You don't even have to be my favorite family member. I just anybody that's rolling with me in a war. If I come upon them in that condition, mm -hmm. like. <laughs> People don't understand, but but anyway, my point is, it was from that story, that situation, mm -hmm. where um, Allah said, "No, you can't do that. You, if you're gonna do it, it's got to be eye for eye. It's got to be one for one, and you cannot desecrate their bodies. Mm -hmm. But 
forgiveness is better. Don't you like it when Allah forgives you your sins, blah, blah, blah. And so this woman, like, goes and does this amazing, beautiful thing. And, and then, and, but, uh, you know, I had never really read the details of the story. Listening to the guidance that the husband gave, trust Allah, you'll find your way. Just so beautiful, just like, just, just one of the most unbelievable, like, moments in the history of human beings, period. And something that has changed, just changed my life. And so it's like, being a, a Christian and exclusivist, and you go, okay, Jesus says, no one comes to the Father but by Him. Mm. I got it. I'm with it. That's what it is. At the same time, I'm like, you cannot tell me the Spirit of Christ is not working in that girl. I, I want to, yeah. I, I, you, there's nothing... The Pope, God bless him, could come down on a Shekinah cloud and tell me, no, 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 that was the devil. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's mm -hmm. not how the devil mm -hmm. operates. Um, so it creates these questions like, okay, what's, uh, how does this oh, work? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and it, it's not as simple anymore. And I'm not saying it because it was an emotional issue. It was. But there are real theological questions Especially for people of a Calvinistic persuasion, how does somebody who is not only staying with original sin but totally depraved, yeah, how does somebody who's there get from there to there? On such a major issue, on, on life, there, what uh, what else is there? I know. I mean, and like I was watching something one time where, because we've done this yeah. too, is it, it's weird to me. Like we did this too as Christians. That white dude, he shot at the church, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the Christian said to, to him, they said, we don't want you to die, we don't want you to kill, we don't want you dead, and they said, um, uh, we enjoyed you when you were with us. They, they said, you killed some of the most beautiful people we've ever met, but we enjoyed you and we want the best for you. And so they were advocating for this guy, don't kill this guy, they were going to the judge cell. So we've done it too. And I remember one time, one of my favorite preachers was like, Unbelievers cannot understand what just happened here because, and he was mm -hmm. talking about how our entire context as Christians is, you know, we were we were the beneficiaries of an unjust death, mm -hmm. and so be, you know Christ died for us, and so because right. we're beneficiaries of an unjust death, we are able to forgive unjust deaths. Mm -hmm. Yep, but that's I'm sorry, that story with the Muslim lady. That we're not the only group of people that do that. Right, right. Um, so I, I don't believe that, that God forgives your sins because you do something as amazing as that. I believe that God forgives your sins because he punished Christ, punished you in Jesus. And faith in him is the only thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what that woman's relationship with Christ is. Even if she says she's a Muslim. I don't know. And nobody yeah. can know. Yeah. But my life has become a lot more complex. And it's not as simple as, let's divide up the world into the damned and the saved. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not like that. Yeah. And so, like, these are things that I, like, struggle with. And, and I, I struggle with them in the sense of, like, you know, I, you know, it, it, it directs how I pray for her, right? And I'm like... Yo, you've already done a massive work in her, so mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, like when yeah. you're when you're young and and you know there's a specific little thing that hit our little theological subculture about five seven years ago, and all all the guys were you know all over reform stuff and your boyfriend at the time. Shout out to the homie, like he didn't know what he was talking about, but it was this was very. Very simplistic view. Of, <laughs> longer than five years ago. Very, very, sim very simplistic view of the world. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, all, and, and they almost enjoyed the unthinking simplicity of their whatever. Mm. And a lot of times it was just absolutely cruel. It's like there's gonna be five people in heaven, and, and, and everybody else is going to hell, and it's gonna be great. Can't wait. You know, they're gonna be a barbecue. Blah blah blah. So, uh, so, so, and, and anyway, like, this, this song, like, had so many, like, like, things for me that was, like, flashing, where it was, like, losing innocence, becoming yeah. a jaded adult, you know, like, yeah. having a completely hyper-simplistic world, sitting in judgment of the older generation, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. 
And then, of course, the older generation is sitting in judgment of the younger generation. All you millennials, mm -hmm. you millennials mocking millennials, and then and then uh, the millennials came back with a comeback a year ago, like, okay, boomer, you know? And I was watching one of my uh, <laughs> friends, they're not really a friend, they're like, we should not be saying, okay, boomer, blah, 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 there are elders, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> These people had been mocking these millennials. These are the same people who paid like $150 for college and yeah. then began mocking these poor millennial kids and all the rest of it. They completely fucked up the world for these kids and then the kids start fighting back and all of a sudden, like, where's the responsibility yeah. for the older generation to say to us, hey, here's how we can help you? I think sometimes that the older generation just resents the younger generation because there's... For some, so, there's less struggle. You know what I mean? Like, like we grind on this channel, right? We do a lot of work, but at the same time, it's not like working sun up to sun down doing physical labor. And you know what I mean? Well, I do work sun up to sun. Yes, but not on this channel. I am. And this so is I like think that like 12, a, like yeah. any time that there's like an, the older generation is looking at oh YouTube, you have a YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Anytime yeah, I yeah. say it, I always feel like it's like a giant joke. Like yeah, they definitely resent the hell out of that. Yeah, yeah. I I'm gonna play video games and make money off it. Yeah, like it's like one of those yeah. things. Well, yeah. people are like nobody makes serious money off of that. I'm like yeah, I'm a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is a deep song. But I, I love the song because it, 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 I thought it was a, it was overall a positive song for mm -hmm. me. And there, and I just imagined. I'm glad that we didn't have a video for this. Yeah. Because I just imagined Ian with a guitar and belting it, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty cool. I had a pretty cool moment with Ian. For me, the beginning, like that first part, I was like, oh, because I just I feel like that. Um, but. You know, like I had no regrets written real big on my wall. And like now I'm older, I'm like, you friggin' can't live your life without regrets. I mean, there's gotta be something you're gonna be like, shit, I wish I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> Maybe just depending on the type of person you are, but yeah. I feel like there's some, if you don't have any regrets, there's some stuff you should regret. <laughs> Good song. Good um, song. So Deep. yeah, but then like as it progressed, I was like, Ian was exactly who I was thinking of too, so it was funny we both were thinking that. Um, I loved the way that it sounded. Like the whole, I liked his voice and the way that the song went and I was sad when the song was done, like, it's weird, I was sad when the song was done, like, when we finish a, a TV series. I was yeah. Like, no. I agree. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, it's so cute when Orion does that. Oh no. Do we have that on video yet? Uh, I don't know. I gotta find, we gotta put him in a situation. I want to. I want to watch that like fifty eight thousand times, bro. Like I. I, I mean, I have. A, I have a video of him throwing a fit. That, that, those are easy to that catch. That is just like. <laughs> he was playing the video game and he he was losing. He's like, oh no. Oh, did he say it when he was watching that film that I had going? Remember when I when I said that it was it, it was oh. an assassin? Yeah, yeah. He kind of. Did he say it? He kind of said it. But like, I didn't think he was old enough that to even video understand. Game, I know at anything this guy does, she's like, "Oh my God, he's a, he's a golden child." That that um, that video, that, I mean, that time when he was playing this game and he was losing and he was like, "Oh no!" That was like, <laughs> "Oh my God, all right." I'm gonna go see him after this. All right, what do you get the song? Oh, it's it was ten, a ten for me. Oh, boop, boop. Ten. ten. I loved it. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.